how to create a dual light design like this in Affinity Photo. This tutorial uses a number of sort of hidden features of Affinity Photo, but ones that are really useful and powerful that you can use in all kinds of projects and you can use it with any kind of shape and design. So let's just remove that first. And first thing to do, just create an ellipse. It doesn't have to be ellipse. It could be any shape, any design. But I'm just using the ellipse, for example. So just create that. Hold down the shift to create a circular design. Again, it doesn't have to be circular at all. It could be any sort of shape, ellipses, star designs, anything. So once you've done that, fill it with something. And you can fill it with all kinds of things. Maybe type, gradients, images, brush strokes, anything. I'm just going to go over here, click fill, and you can see I've got a gradient. Now go to the swatches panel you've probably got hundreds, of maybe 10 or 15 gradients to choose from. A whole range of different options from just one of these gradients. But I'm just using this one. So with this gradient, I can now apply effects to it. The great thing about that, it's still live. So you can modify and tweak it at any point. Also, the duplication I'm going to use will link them all. So any change to one, Changes them all, and that creates that sort of weird jewel-like feature in Affinity Photo. So let's just go with this ellipse and go with layer. I'm going to go down here to New Live Filter Layer and Distort and Twirl. Now you could use all these other ones. They're all great. Pinch and Punch is great as well. They're all really useful, especially combined with maybe making multiple copies of this effect. So Twirl. Now, Twirl and quite a few of these filters are really odd because what you do, you have to preserve alpha. If you don't preserve alpha and you apply this angle, say you do that, you distort the shape. I don't want to do that in this video. What I want to do is preserve the alpha so you can see you get this black here. So just change the angle there and you'll get the twirl effect inside. And also you can change origin position so you can move it around, create all kinds of effects that way. Also, what you can do, blend mode. Now I'm going to not go with normal because you just won't be able to see the multiple copies of effects. So what you need to do is change them. You can change it to anything. You can try all these options. Personally, the one I always like to use, but obviously you will probably be different, negation. So negation, that's quite close to the bottom. So select that. Once you've done that, you can obviously continue to change that, but also change the angle, but you can also just close it. And you can always go back to it later and just try out different settings. So now let's just expand this out. And you can see what you've got. You've got the ellipse, you've got the live effect just below it. So that twirl there. Well, now what I want to do is duplicate this, but I want to use a link duplicate. And that means that anytime you change one, all the others change. And I know that sounds a bit odd. Why would you have use for that? But if you've combined it and you've used some rotation and other things, all combines in different ways. They're all again still live. So with that twirl, what you can do is go to layer and duplicate link. Unfortunately, the tool that you, I'm going to use, the move duplicate, doesn't create duplicate linked, but you can create it beforehand. So duplicate linked, and now you can see a combination. They're both negation. So you can go to that one or that one. Exactly the same. Exactly the same settings. And you can already see you created an interesting design. But now you've got that linked, it's that little link there. Well, Make sure you've got the move tool selected, one of these selected, press return or enter, and you can duplicate it. You can do this with lots of different layer types. So this, you can see then, duplicate. So just set, and then straight away you can see you get even more intense design. Well, number of copies. Let's just change that to three or four. Now you can, of course, do this manually. If you're using an earlier version than 2.5 or 2.4, you have to do this manually, but you just simply just duplicate those twirls. But this one does give you the option just to try all the time, just different things. So now, rotation. You can just change rotation. You can see as you change that, that rotation there, it's a different effect there. You can also change distance, change the angle, change the vertical. And you can see as you change that, move it back and forth. And again, if you differ at a different blend mode, the result will be different. And you can always go over here and change it at this point. But I'm just going to keep that. Also, horizontal. And once you've done it, actually applied it, you notice what happened there. Just clicking onto it, 
you lose that layer. So you just undo. And it goes back to that. Again, move tool, press return or enter, and you've got this panel again. Again, duplicate, number of copies. I'm going to go with four. Four is reasonable. Don't want too many there. And then rotation. You can see, you can just tweak that. Change distance, horizontal again, and so on. But what you can also do, once you've got this setting, and I, you could, of course, go back and modify all these things, but you've got these layers now. You can delete them as well, of course. You simply just delete them, just go down here, delete them, enter. It doesn't delete all the others. So delete that one, that's it, that's all it's gone. So now, click or double click. Sometimes it seems to be a click, sometimes double click, so double click. You should get this panel up. And then what you can do is you can change the angle. And you can see as you do that, that changes. And also, you can still use change origin points. So as you drag that around, you can see it creates sort of different effects like that. Change radius, push that out, maybe push it a bit less than that. And again, you change the origin point, and you can see you can create all kinds of abstract jewel-like designs very, very quickly. And I'm going to go, I think that looks quite nice. So close that. Again, go here to the twirl, you can go and change that. If you decide, you know, let's just try, run through, you can see, I think, that some of the effects, some of them actually create nice painter-like effects. You get a very sort of painted effect, maybe lighter colour. I think that creates quite a beautiful thing, but also maybe lighten. I think lighten always creates an interesting one. Screen, in this case, doesn't. Collar dodge, yeah, and maybe multiply. Just try a dark colour. The darker ones, of course, just mean it just gets darker and darker. So I think negation, I'm just going to go with that. But also what you can do, any point, you can simply select the ellipse. So with that selected, you can apply live filters to that, not obviously modifying this, but simply go to layer and then go out down here, new live filter layer. You can also go to like blur, maybe distort, use some of the others, maybe go spherical. So spherical, select that. So you've got that. Now you'll notice that's not duplicate linked. So you, obviously you could do the same. You could have a whole load of duplicate links associated with that sphere. It's another option. This time, again, preserve alpha and change the intensity. And you can see then, you get a slight, obviously it's very small, but then you go to the radius. And also you can modify that. So you can see, you can create all kinds of different weird and wonderful distortions that way. And maybe go like that and close that. And again, exact same, you could use duplicate link for that. Or maybe go for layer, new life filter, distort, maybe mesh warp. Just try that. You can see distort that. Now that's distorting the shape. It's still live effect. Still live effect, which you click done. You can always remove it. If you decide, you know what, I don't want that distortion. But you might want that shape. That shape there, you can, See, whoops, dragging that one around. Personally, mesh warp, I always find it slightly odd. So just going to remove that. But also what you can do, you can convert this to a curve as long as you've got the ellipse or any other shape, you've got a star or anything else. As long as that's selected, not these, as long as that's selected, you can always go there to convert to curves. So click convert to curves. And then you can modify that a bit like the warp feature. It's sort of you're warping it. And you can see then as you warp it and change that, you get a whole range of different options there. Sometimes obviously it doesn't look so good there. But also you can go around here and you can add some additional nodes and distort it again. Now you will occasionally get this black appearing, obviously in some positions. And you can then, of course, distort that again that way. Now the shape itself can also be combined. So you can always go to layer and duplicate. So you've got two now. They're independent. You can move that around there, maybe position it like that, maybe rotate it. Maybe then go for blend mode for that. And you can see you can blend those together. So go maybe for lighter color, create some weird combinations of all those different strands of color all combining. Now, this design and that design, Simply, if you want, you could paste it inside another shape. So you might not want it like this. So with that, edit, underscore, cut, and then go down here and maybe use a rectangle. So rectangle, go to edit, and then paste inside. So that design now 
is inside there. And you can manipulate that. They resize that. All these effects, are st and you've got that sort of design, lovely sort of poster light design you can put on your wall. And it still, at any point, you can always expand out and go to any of these twirls, double click or click. Sometimes it seems zoom or click. You can then change the angle and you can see as you change that, you get another effect, another design that again, literally infinite amount of sort of unusual poster designs for, let's select the rectangle, make some rectangle selected. You can resize, resize that, drag that out. It's a great sort of poster for your wall. And it doesn't have to be twirls. It doesn't have to be spheres. It doesn't need to be a gradient. It could easily be brush strokes, type, images. Anything can be used as a source for this design. So once you've done that, of course, you can then, of course, file and you can export that design. So file and export if you want to save it. And instead of selecting the whole area, obviously selection area there, you get your design there. And of course, set the size as required and export. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Bye.